Joining me to talk more on the importance of literacy is the director, Alpha Reading Society, Peter Bankoli. Thank you so much for joining us on TVC News at 6. Uh, talk to us about the fundamental importance of um, observing the International Literacy Day. Uh, International Literacy Day is absolutely important for us to be able to draw attention of all our sundry to the fact that any society that is not literate can never develop. And so it is, like you said, it's a matter of dignity and human right. And it is important that each and every one of us must be aware. And so with a day that is set aside, help us to draw attention of all stakeholders, whether you're in the public, private sector, or nonprofit like us, to be able to say, everybody it has to be inclusive it is not for a particular segment of the people uh, but for all and when all of us are literate there is a direct relationship mm -hmm. between literacy and development of any nation mm -hmm. and that's why we celebrate a day like today makes sense so in that sense uh, poverty unemployment and gender inequality etc are part of you know the uh, some of the challenges world over. So how does literacy, or how do you think literacy can also help to, uh, to tackle the scourge of this prevalence, uh, poverty, unemployment, etc.? Okay, for, for any uh, literate community, they begin to reason beyond their environment. And we have seen this happen with what we do at AIFA. Uh, you will see that we pick a child that is in a low um, income community, uh, teach them or support them to be able to be literate, and then watch them over a short period, two, three years, and you will see the remarkable difference. They begin to understand that that is their passport, that is their key to be able to succeed in life. And we do this in, in, in a few ways. One, we do it through book clubs. The book club inspire them uh, gives them the opportunity to be able uh, to read. And when they read, they are inspired. Uh, we also do uh, calculate to see, I mean, um, calculate to succeed. And for that one, we basically look at how they use, you know, uh, mathematics and things like that to be able to advance in knowledge. Mm. All of this help us to, to, to take them to a different level where they see beyond the poverty around them. Mm. And for every person that is literate, they aim for something higher. And that is what this is all about. Interesting. Uh, considering the aftermath of the coronavirus pandemic, we know we're looking at the theme for uh, the, this year's International Literacy Day. They said transforming literacy learning spaces. So how has learning evolved to especially this post-pandemic period? Yeah, pandemic has taught us that we, we cannot do things the same way that we have always done it. Traditionally, we have classrooms and, and the likes, but, but learning spaces go beyond that. We have workspaces, we have homes, believe it or not. Uh, we, we have all kinds of, even social media are areas where we can learn. In fact, anywhere that knowledge can be impacted or transferred, that is what we refer to as learning spaces. So it can be virtual, it can be physical, and, and all the rest. Even churches and mosques can be tagged as, as learning um, spaces. So what we have seen is that post-pandemic, many of those uh, learning spaces have changed. In fact, according to the data of the yeah. United Nations, I mean uh, UNESCO, uh, about 24 million people may never get back to the formal uh, learning spaces learning, anymore. Yeah. So we need to do something about it. And you will see that in the last one year or so, people are beginning to learn online. And that Absolutely. presumes that people have access to um, online devices mm. or, or, or mobile devices. Right. But it's also not true. So we need to begin to prepare for that. Right, makes sense. The director of Enterprise Development Center, Pan-Atlantic University, Peter Bangkoli. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Mm.